Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And, yeah, and all people who are watching this uh, service all around the world. And um, I, I pray this morning so that everybody will stick to the word of God. And uh, th this morning's um, little, um, what I have to say is about giving. Giving is not uh, losing. Giving is gaining also. And uh, let's pray for this service. Uh, may the almighty God help this service this morning and help all people who are in and those who are having problems with everything, both health and uh, financial issues due to this COVID and due to the, the things that is going on in their lives. In the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. All right. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about giving and uh, sacrificing the things that we do. Sometimes we will think that we don't even have anything to give out and we become very selfish. It's not the way. The little you get is what God appreciates. It's not what you have. You don't have to be rich to give out. So I just want to let everybody know. I have something here to say about giving. Giving and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye may with all, it shall be measured to you again. That means whatever you give, someday you're gonna be profited from. And this comes from Luke 6 verses 28 and 38. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and faithfulness because of you, O oh God, because of the blood that you shed for us, O oh God. You, for, you have forgiven us, O oh God, from all our shortcomings and iniquities. And thank you so much that you never leave us, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. You never leave your people nor forsake them, oh God. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The name above every name. So you were the word at the beginning. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation is now revealed in you, are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great. My sin was great. Your love was greater. Oh, I could separate us now. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Oh, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. 
Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. No rival, and you have no equal now and forever. God, you reign. Oh, yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. Oh, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Yes, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, your name. Thank you, God. Oh, Lord. Worship to Jesus, no, there's no equal. Nothing compares. No one like him. What does that mean to us? You know, even what we're going to talk about today, it is something. And that's what we're going to, to discover. Oh, what is that name is all about? The name of Jesus Christ our King, our Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your presence, O oh Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that moving in power and work in us. God, it doesn't matter what we're going through in life at this point of time. It doesn't matter what the situation would be, but no one cannot stop us to worship the living God the God that we know that is every his name is every name that above every name that every knee shall bow and tongue and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord that he is Lord and no one like you God and we will celebrate we will celebrate for the rest of our lives oh God unto the eternal of who you are that you are a, a living God, that you are alive, working and moving in power. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come to you today to bring to, to, to bring us, oh Lord Jesus, the glory that we need, that we, that we ask to see, for us to see, oh Lord God, the greatness. And Lord, bless our time together with your spirit that flows in this very place, oh Lord God. And Lord, our focus is you and not our enemy. Our focus is you and not ourselves. Our focus is you and not of this world or whatever this world can offer. Our eyes fix on you alone. Because today, Lord, we say, we celebrate that no one like you. No one like you. And nothing compares to, no one can compare, and nothing can compare to you, Lord. You're the only one that we long for. We are longing for more of you. We desire for more of you. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, may you speak to us today. I even ask for myself, Lord Jesus, right now, cover me under your wings. People may not hear me. People may not see me, but they will see you, Lord. Put your words to my mouth so that people can hear you, not me. I pray this, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Mickey and worship team. What a wonderful time together worshiping the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> it is so powerful. Just declaring the, the name of Jesus, the name above every name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. How many of you, this is the day that the Lord has made? Amen. I remember that song, the very first day of, and I was, I think I was seven years old when I sing that song. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Let's, uh, and, and to me, that's why I kind of introduced that, because the prayer is so powerful, especially in the name of Jesus. When you utter prayer, make sure in the name of Jesus. Every utterance says, every prayer that you have and you might have to have, you have to say the name of Jesus. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Emphasizing that because we know how powerful it is. Even Jesus said that, ask anything in my name and it will be given to you. How many of you believe that? Do you believe that in the name of Jesus, everything will happen? Today, I don't know, I, I'm not so sure of what I'm going to say. But I rely and depending on, on, on what God tells me to do so. And this is the warfare that I'm talking about. I, I, I have written all this and prepared this for several months now. But, you know, since November, I'm preparing all of this. And now I'm going to talk about it. But to tell you I'm not the one who's going to speak today, but the Lord is, I believe that. Because I definitely, this is just something that, that I just prepared, but the Lord will, will do it. He will make you understand. He will make you understand what is this all about. Because I don't know how to explain even to you. It's just only my perspective and my opinion, but you know what, this is the truth. I'm going to tell you it's all about the word of God here that I'm focusing and it's all about Jesus when it comes to warfare and it's not about maybe some of you look at this uh, be aware and 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 all of these questions who is the enemy right so spiritual warfare is that's what we think all, of, all the time what are the enemies right our angels and demons are real. These are the first thing that come into your mind when it comes to spiritual warfare. Uh, can a Christian be possessed? You know, how many of you knows that there's a evil possession or, uh, you know, demon kind of like that? 
how do we fight spiritual warfare? Those are the questions that we might have to ask. Does spiritual warfare still happen today? How do I know if it is a spiritual warfare or something else? Those are some questions. Deliverance needed. What is deliverance? We're going to talk about that through all throughout the series. I'm not going to talk about that today, but redemption from traditions and cultures today uh, is an evidence. We were saying happy Easter, right? Is that a tradition or is that biblical? We were going to talk about that. I, mean, I have something to say about that later. The significance of worship and intercession and warfare. What is the value of worshiping God in intercession, in warfare? And what is the value of interceding or standing in the gap for other people in warfare? We're going to discover all of that. The importance of the word of God. Here we go. I'm talking about it. I just introduced you. I'm, I'm, I'm I just, uh, my introduction a while ago is the word of God is way, way important uh, uh, above all. And it's not about what, and, and then the role of the Holy Spirit. These are the things that we're going to talk about all throughout the warfare or all throughout the series. And we don't know how long that this is going to be. But definitely, it's going to be powerful for all of us as a Christians to walk in the spirit of the Lord. Because we know and we are aware of, of, of the warfare. Are you ready to begin the war? Are you ready for war? Are you ready in a battle? But to tell you the truth, before the battle begins, you are ready one you are already placed in victory amen here we go what is a spiritual warfare and this is spiritual warfare it's all about Ephesians 6 verse 12 it says that for we are not fighting again flesh and blood what we are fighting about against powers, principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Where's the heavenly places? Not in the upstairs, right here around us. These are heavenly places, right here, where we are at right now. This is heavenly places. And there are principalities, rulers, evil spirit that are around us. And the problem, so for many people, even Christians today, they're not believing and not aware that there's enemy. How many of you believe that there's enemy? Of course, we're not focusing on the enemy. As I said, warfare is not about the enemy. It's about Jesus. Remember that. We have two levels of warfare. You know what are the two levels of warfare? Here you go. I'm going to show you. The two levels of warfare, number one is your personal, means yourself. <laughs> How many of you don't like yours? <laughs> Sometimes you do. Yeah, I, 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 one time I said to myself, I hate myself. I think the my, my enemy is myself. Sometimes I, I look at that. But I always think about what Paul says in Ephesians, I'm not fighting against this, fle uh, this flesh and blood, but I'm fighting against the spirit that is in my mind, you know, that keeping bothering me. The reason that I did something because of that spirit that telling me so, and I'm, not li and I'm listening to that spirit instead of listening to Jesus, instead of listening to the voice of God. Number two, the public. Your enemy could be your family. I, I, again, I'm just saying this. It, it's, they're, they're not your enemy. They're, they're, they're in flesh and blood. But there's a spirit within them. Right? Uh, and there's spirit around them. So it could be your family, your friends, your co-workers, church, or, or these nations of the world. How many of you today are aware of 
what's going on all over the world, like Myanmar. Myanmar is in, is in uh, I don't know, but I keep praying every day of my life, every time I look, Lord, have mercy upon your people. Let these people know about the truth. But remember this, whoever holds the key places wins the battle. Who hold the key? You. And you will win the battle. And here, having said that, we have three things that we need to guard. What are the three things that we need to guard? Number one, our mouth. <laughs> Number two, our heart. And number three, our thoughts. Look at that. When I said that our mind is, is what we were thinking, right? When I said the mouth, the word that we speak, the word that coming out from our mouth. And when I said, and when I said heart, our attitude and our emotion. Is our attitude or our emotion controlled us or we control our attitude or our emotion? Or who controls, who controls your attitude and your emotion, right? Remember these three things that, we're, 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 that we need to be guarded. Again, you know, if you give everything to the Lord, your mind, your soul, your heart, your, even your mouth. Every time I said this, uh, every time I come here and speak about the word of God, I said, Lord, put your words to my mouth. Why did I say that? Because I don't want sometimes my words that coming up, <laughs> that coming up from my mouth, you know? Here's the thoughts that we have. Number one, what we're thinking is this. The thoughts that came from ourselves is human thoughts. It's human knowledge, it's human wisdom. The thoughts that came from the enemy is demonic. What it means by demonic, those are evil thoughts. I'm going to kill that person. I'm going to steal that money. I'm going to take those girls and bring them to border of Mexico and United States. I'm sorry, this political thing. <laughs> you know, those are thoughts. Those are demonic and then thoughts that came from God, it's divine. What is that? Means divine, means the righteousness. All good things is the thoughts that come from God. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So you know what's your thought, what you're thinking now, if it is from human flesh, from human knowledge or from human wisdom, or is your thought is from demonic? Or your thought is from, divine, is from God, which is divine. And the divine thought is the greatness of God, which is the righteousness, the holiness. Next week, we're going to talk about that. Because God, Jesus himself, commanded us, be perfect because I am, your Father in heaven is perfect. Be holy because, you're, because I am holy. We're going to talk about that. What is, it has something to do with that spiritual warfare. In Psalms 1, let's, let's do this one by one, right? So I started with the mind, what we're thinking. In Psalm 139, verse, verse 23, it says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. How many of you are struggling with life or situation that you have in this time? I do. There's some, there's some like, you know, like putting on me, like the doctor telling me a lot of things. You have a bone cancer. You have a blood vessel cancer. You have a kidney problem. <laughs> Those are human thoughts that they put on my thoughts and gives me anxiety, 
gives me fear. And I said to the Lord, Lord, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. I would not depend on these things that going on right now in my thoughts, right? But rather think about the divine, the divine thoughts, which is, which is God, what God is saying. What is God saying? about fear? What is God saying about anxiousness or anxiety? Right? But here we go. God simply saying, above all, I think about you, Romy. So how would I respond to that word? It's the same way. It's just like God is telling me about all I think about you. So do the same. Above all, think about me. That was Jesus said. Above all, think about me because above all, I think about you. Jesus became a role model to us. He died for all of us. He died because he wants you, because he thinks about you above all. Amen? Amen. Now let's go to number two, the mouth, the words, right? There are so many scriptures that you will see about the mouth, about the words that coming up from our life, from our, you know, Proverbs 18, 21, I will say all of this. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love that, to talk will reap the consequences. James 1, 19, those know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, is slow to speak, is slow to anger. That is the instruction of, uh, you know, James to, to Christians, to have wisdom. Proverbs 10, verse 11, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Look at that. These are all the, the Proverbs. These are all wisdom on how to guard our mouth, you know, every day. Matthew 15, verse 11, this is what Jesus said. <laughs> It is not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. I like this part. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Woo! Look at that. I'm just saying a while ago, how many of you saying Happy Easter? All of us know that. Happy Easter. But what were you thinking when you said Happy Easter? Aaron told me, Pastor, there's an Easter egg out there you will find. It's a gold Easter egg. And then a while ago, you will, have you seen a bunny going around, right? Because I put all the bunny, I replace all your, uh, <laughs> what do you call this? I replace all your slides and your PowerPoint into bunny, Easter bunny pictures. You know, this is what it's all about. Easter. Is that what we're saying? Come on, Christian. It's not Easter. <laughs> of course, Easter. It is a recent day of the Lord that we have to celebrate. So when you said happy recent day, maybe people doesn't know that, what it means. And then, what do you mean, happy recent day? One time, the, yesterday, I, I come across with people. I told them, happy recent day. They said, what? What is happy recent day? I said, when Jesus was resurrected, when Jesus overcome death. See? These are Christian people that they don't know what I'm talking about. 
I, I, yesterday, I just said that to somebody. Hey, happy recent day. Oh, Pastor, wait. What is recent day? Imagine. But if you said happy Easter day, oh, they know. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not trying to be legalistic here, but this is the thing that comes from our mouth. Choose the right words to say. If, especially if you're Christian, do what it is pleases him. Do what God pleases him. Do the righteousness. And this is what I think. I'm not saying that, you know, I cannot say that happy Easter or whatever. But I'm just saying, if you're a Christian, you know, I, I encourage you to say happy recent day instead of happy Easter. Easter is all about Asian countries. Do you know that? Yeah. Easter celebrate like Buddhist and Hindu is him. Psalm 19 verse 14, it says this. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So everything that comes from my mouth will be pleasing to you, God. That is the prayer of a psalmist. And that is also my prayer in my life. Lord, I don't want people to, 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 to listen or to hear the words that is not coming from you. And even the things that we do every Christmas, many people put Merry Xmas instead of Merry Christmas, right? Those are examples of that, how we do it. How we can be, how can we spread the gospel of God? Just think to guard our heart, to, to guard our mouth, to guard the things that we said, right? And, and, it, and all of us, I think, Maybe it's un uncomfortable to say it. I'm going to talk about that next week too. Maybe there's a place for you that is so uncomfortable, but you know what? It doesn't matter how uncomfortable, as long as you grow, that is the right place to fit you. I'm saying this to many today probably, that saying Happy Easter, that is so uncomfortable for me. But this is something that I have to tell you. This is the truth that I know from the word of God. I never seen Happy Easter in the Bible. But I have seen the word reason and resurrection in the Bible. How many of you agree with that? Have you seen the word reason? Have you seen the word resurrection in the Bible? Have you seen Easter in the Bible? Right? So those are the things, but <laughs> I don't want to be rough on you. And I, I, I know it, it is for our, all of us to grow, to know the truth. The fact that we wanted to share the word of God, to share the truth, to share the gospel. And by means of that, it's just, uh, we're just saying, I'm just saying that we need to be wise. We need to have that wisdom to use the words that coming from our mouth, that uh, the word of God. Right? And then number three, so that is the Psalms 119 verse 14. And the number three, the last one, would be our heart. The heart is the one that, that ha, uh, shows our attitude and our emotion. Proverbs 4, 23, it says this, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Look at that, how powerful it is. That is wisdom right there. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. That means deal with the wrong attitudes and you must deal it responsibly and consistently. How many of you have an attitude? <laughs> I do. I'm not excused of that. So I have to deal with it. Not to deal it once, but deal it consistently and deal it responsibly. You know, one time I, I, I come across with people that, you know, I'm online to the counter to pay for my, for my grocery and somebody just like 
came out and it came first. The man said, oh, oh, hold on a second, I came first. You see, it's not just only him have an attitude, me too, because I get mad at him and corrected him instead of letting him go. What is two seconds or two minutes for him to take it, to take my place, right? But I do have that attitude. And I said, no, I go first. <laughs> How many of you have that? You know, Jeremiah 17, 19, look at this. Uh, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. How many of you believe that? I believe that. When somebody hurts you, you said you forgive them, but you're not really forgiving them because you still remember what they have done to you. Isn't it right? You said you forgive them, but there's, you're still thinking about what he has done. Is that a forgiveness? It's your emotion that's controlling you. It's not your, it, it, you're not dealing with, with that person that you're saying you are forgive, you, you forgive him, you forgave him, but actually you still remember what he had done to you. So that is not forgiveness. You're not releasing yourself to forgiveness. You're still holding grudges into your heart. You know why? There are people like that. They said, I forgive you. But when you see them, they can even smile at you. They just like, hmm? you know, hey, you told me you forgive me. Come on. Why you can't even smile at me? You run away from me. Is that forgiveness? Because their, their heart, their emotion controls them. You really, who really knows how bad it is our emotion and our attitude, you know? God is the author of our emotion. Remember that. It's not you. So let God control your emotion, not you. Because if you are the one who control your emotion, it's so hard to forgive. And one thing that is so hard to forgive is yourself. When you've done something wrong, it's so hard to forgive and release yourself to that. And Jesus remind us, and Paul remind us, there is no more condemnation for those who are here, Christ Jesus, Romans 8.1. Now, let me go further, you know, uh, with this. I have a story with you. See, there is a, uh, there's a father and the son. They went to the, it, the this man is a gardener. Uh, and if you look at the, it's the gardener and, and, uh, and, and his son. They came to, the, to their garden. Um, The, the one time when they, they, they went to see all their plants and then the gardener saw a caterpillar on the plants and, and, uh, and, and, and you know, he saw the caterpillars on the plant and, and eating the plants, eating the leaf and the flower. And then the gardener told his son, look at son, my look at son, the caterpillar is eating the plant, is eating the leaf and the flower. And then the son right away answered, Dad, do you want me to get a pesticide? And then the gardener said, No, I did not tell you to kill them. I did not tell you to kill that caterpillar. And he said this, do you know, though this caterpillar eats some of this flower and leaves so that they grow up and when they grow up, they become butterflies. Right there, the caterpillars become butterflies. And with their pollination process, they might return to reproduce my flowering plants further. And then he said this, think about this son. If you were the plant, do you hold any grudges to the, butter, to the caterpillar? 
What is my point? Forgiveness. Sometimes people may hurt you, but don't let your emotion control you. Don't hold grudges to them. If they ask for forgiveness, forgive them fully. Do not hold grudges to those people. You know why? Because one of these days, through those people, you might grow. And you become butterfly, flying, shining, and beautiful because of them. And you might be the flower that everyone take the blossom and smell and appreciate the beauty of it because of that people hurt you, because of that something that hurts you. Do not hold grudges among those people. There are people out there that hurts me. There are people out there gives me pain but I choose to forgive and not hold grudges among them because one of these days I will grow and bloom and be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. This is the warfare that I'm talking about. This is the warfare that we need to think about. Think about Jesus. What would Jesus do in every situation of life? In, especially in our emotion, in our heart. When this heart been touched, it's so difficult to deal with. But it is easy when you have Jesus in your mind and in your heart. Because with my experience in life, many people hurt me, some left me, and leave me broken in sorrow and in pain. But those sorrow and pain made me grow and see more light beyond what I expected. Trust the gardener. He knows and he has a plan for his creation. Who is the gardener? God. And he over, and he watches us. All his creation. In Hebrew 12, verse 6, it says this. I don't have it. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he discards every son whom he received. Right? Now, talking about spiritual warfare, and, and we did the battle begins, right? So before the battle begins, I want you to be prepared. And prepare to the warfare. And the preparation of warfare is this. Number one, and all of it, this is just the preparation, only one. Knowing who God is, is essential in the warfare. How many of you know who God is? Now, let me give you three examples. One, our God, uh, I mean, the nature, the nature of God, you know, that's what we need to know. Who God is, is in his nature, that is the thing that we cannot be. Who God is in his character, that is he wants us to be. This is what God wants us to be, the character. And this is what we can be. We can be loving, joy, have peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. And that is the character of God that he wants you to be. He wants you to be loving, joyful, peaceful, kind, gentle, self-control, this, patience. These are what God wants you to be. And you can be the character of God. But the nature of God is not what we cannot be. And what are the nature of God? I'll give you three examples. The nature of God is omnipotent. We're not. And we can be omnipotent. He is the only one. Nothing can compare to him and no one like him. And I heard as it is for the voice of great multitude, as the sound of many waters, the sound of mighty thunder saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns forever. God is 
is before all things and him all things holds together. He holds the universe. How you know if you look at the space, how complicated just one galaxy means the sun is the center and the orbits around it. I mean, the planets around it go with their orbit. How intricate that it is. How complicated, how complex it is to look at. How come this, these planets, they, they cannot bump each other? Because God designed it. God holds it together. Right? That is omnipotent. That is powerful God. Even the universe, all his creation, he holds it together. Omniscient is all-knowing. God knows your heart. God knows your mind. God knows everything you do in secret. Such knowledge in 1 Psalm 39, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain. Psalm 147, verse 5, great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Wow. First John 3, 20 says this, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. <laughs> and the last one is omnipresence, is everywhere. How many of you today is God is here with us? Yeah. Knows that, right? We know that he is with us. Heaven is my throne, he says. And earth is my footstool in Isaiah 66, verse 1. So he's in heaven, he's in earth, he's everywhere. Psalm 139, he is everywhere where we can go from his spirit. Where we can go from his spirit is everywhere. So this is the preparation, knowing who God is, his nature and his character. And his nature is omnipotent, omniscience, and omnipresence. He is everywhere. He is powerful and is all-knowing. Remember that. So, and then the character of God that you can be. And if you know that, that you have that thing in your heart and in your mind, I don't think that no one can be against you. I don't think that enemy can, can put fear in your heart or fear in your mind. I don't think the whatever lies and deception that the enemy will give you or bring to you, you can still stand firm because of that, knowing who God is in your life. In my conclusion, 1 Corinthians, remember this, 1 Corinthians 15, 54, verse 57. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scriptures will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the Lord gives sin in his power. But thank God... He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you wanted to overcome death? You don't want to die, right? You want eternal life. Then you have the victory. How many of you don't want to sin anymore? Because you're sick and tired of sinning. Then you have the victory because of Jesus Christ gave you. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. John 16, 33. Knowing that wisdom and power of God is you by the Holy Spirit today. This is the confidence that we have to overcome the word. Because Jesus said it. John 16, 33. I overcome the word, and you have Jesus, Amen. and you will overcome sin and death. Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you. What a start for us to know what is this spiritual warfare is all about. 
And it's not about the enemy. And it's not about those things that we're thinking. But it's about you. To focus on you. We have warfare in life every day. But God, we don't focus on those battle. Because the battle belongs to you, Lord. The battle is already won. Before even go to the battle, you already won. Because Jesus is in you. Remember this, church. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides you and leads you to direct your path. As long as you trust in Him and giving it all to Him. Lord, today we surrender. We come to you. Maybe there are things that are there that is unknown that we are, have fear about, that, are we, that we worried about. But Lord, we have you. We have the victory in our life. And that is our confidence to face this world every day, no matter what would be like, no matter if it is uncomfortable, Lord, just like all the people that facing right now, Cancer, incurable disease, killings, murdering all over the world, God. But when we have you, we don't think on all of those, but rather think about you, God. Because above all, you thought about us. And today, we will respond above all. We will think about you so that we can be a winner. We can be a winner in victory, in a battle that where we are at right now. Because in the first place, the battle belong, not belong to us, but belongs to you. And to you, God, when we have you, nothing can against us. And no one can be against us because of you, Lord. No one can touch us. No one can harm us because we have you, Jesus. So let our hearts and our mind focus on you alone. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his, may his countenance live upon you. So that you will may walk in and give you peace and you may walk in the spirit. Remember this. You already won the battle. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, which is resurrected and overcome death. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you for all of you uh, watching us live on Facebook and via Zoom that join us. And we would love to hear from you. Please email us and, and contact us. If you need a prayer, just let us know. And we will love to pray for you every, every Friday. We do have that prayer intercession. And every, every Wednesday, we have prayer as well. Amen. Thank you so much.
name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Powerful name it is. The name of Come on and celebrate, 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 come on and celebrate. Resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord. 